What is going on guys, Ghost Rider here bringing you another video here today and it's going to be a tutorial video on how to get better at Call of Duty Ghosts and Call of Duty in general because I know a lot of people have that question. How do you do so good, etc. How do you, you know, have such good aim, etc. ETC. I'm sure a lot of other people have asked that to some other people as well and um, actually are wondering how to get better as well too so without further ado let's get right into it the background video is a gameplay i had on domination prison break where i went 56 and 9 so that's just what you're seeing right now just give you some uh pretty things to look at while i inform you so the first thing first tip i'm actually gonna give you guys today is just take a bit to learn the game um just take a bit to learn the game and just notice the map layout where uh certain certain areas are locations hot spots that people like to go uh, where, where the, mo the places where they're the most firefights and just try to avoid that or if you're feeling confident enough Just get in there and try to get as much kills as you can and get back out. So notice the map layout notice where things are notice call outs, etc uh, Next up notice the spawns notice the spawns um, Specifically for team deathmatch and domination because if you know the spawns It'll prevent you from being in a situation where you might get in front of you just uh, almost magically, you know, it winds up having you dying. So just know the spawn, notice the spawns, and uh, notice the spawn rotations for the domination game mode. But in the domination game mode, they will they will spawn depending on which flag that the enemy controls. So you got to be aware of that and kind of get an idea of where they're going to spawn at to just get that edge on them, get the advantages on them, and um, almost get the surprise on them when they uh, start spawning. And just make sure you just don't get shot in the back off of one of your streaks if you happen to be on one. So that's a very good uh, tip right there because it happens actually a lot when it comes down to domination game modes. And it's actually really, really frust frustrating, especially. Uh, I, I noticed that too. It's actually really annoying. So next off, watch some YouTube vids um, by the pros and um, watch some YouTube vids by, you know, just people who you see that are good at the game. Just watch some videos, see what they're using, see what they're, uh, where they're moving at, where they're moving around in the map and um, what they're using etc just just go and play try to find what works for you so next off just practice practice just by playing like everything else you'll get better at it everything comes with, with time guys you won't get better at cod in a night unless you are superhuman or actually genuinely really good at the game inherently so just practice the game constantly just play every day i mean if you don't have time obviously you'll just you know take a little bit of time keep playing it eventually you'll get it not as quick as somebody who plays this every day but you will get it 100 percent and um, next, learn the, learn the configurations, learn the guns that work best for you. In Call of Duty, there is a number of guns ranging from the sniper rifle to the submachine gun and pistol. And there are a number of perks or added abilities to your character that uh, give you uh, somewhat of an edge over the competition. Um, so just learn what works best for you, what you would rather do or use in every situation, what would you rather run with, all of that. Just take that into account when you're playing the game. Not every gun works for every player and not every configuration works for every player. So keep that in mind. It's also everybody has a different play style. Some people are running guns. Some people are more stay back and pick people off with the sniper or the assault rifle LMG. So just pick a gun that works for you, uh, a configuration that works best for you. And eventually, if you get tired of using said gun or configuration, you'll start to switch things up. And who knows, you could, be, you could be finding a new configuration that nobody has ever seen or is very unorthodox and actually works really, really well. For example, I have, and that was with the Remington and the Tracker site and the um, <laughs> Deadeye perk, and that thing's an absolute monster now. So um, that's just an example. Just work with things that are best for you. Just experiment is basically what I'm going to tell you here. Experiment with things until you find things that actually work 100% well for you. And coupled with noticing the map layout and knowing the spawns, and uh, just overall practicing, you'll see a better increase in your Call of Duty knowledge and a better increase in your Call of Duty skill. <clears throat> Excuse me. So right after that, right after that, I'm going to tell you the next thing you can do to try and get better at COD is to invest in some hardware. Now, these are not needed at all. It's just they give you a competitive edge on people who might have, who might have, who might not have these hardware. And basically what I mean by hardware is things like controllers and headsets and monitors and all that and the first thing I'm gonna get into guys is the controller controller is actually coming becoming more prevalent in this Call of Duty game and in other shooters as well and uh, when I'm talking controllers I'm talking about the big ones like the scuff gaming controllers and the cinch controllers that uh, all the pros use and are available commercially for everybody else now the scuff controllers are controllers that are very customizable and they have paddles in the back which act as for default the A and B buttons on the face of the controller which means Instead of being able to have to lift your thumb off the right stick to sacrifice aiming to hit the jump or the drop button, the crouch button, 
Those buttons are already on the back of the controller, enabling you to jump shot and drop shot while still keeping your aim on the right stick, your, your finger on the right stick, and still keeping your aim on target, which is why they make those things very useful. So jump shotting and drop shotting is something very, very useful within this game, and if you utilize it the right way, you'll be, have an edge over your competition every single time. Now with the cinch controller, it's basically the same way, but they have buttons on the uh, inner, in the innermost part where you hold your fingers, around where the ring finger or the middle finger is, on the, uh, you know, the stems of the controller where it sticks out and the uh, same concept as the self as the scuff controller it just comes down to all it just comes down to a very basic personal preference when picking one or the other and but uh, these both give you an absolute edge over the competition because some people might not have it therefore you can jump shot drop shot at will and they will not be expecting that and it's absolutely actually really useful the next piece of equipment that you should be able to or should invest in is the headset any headset will do uh, there are many out there and Astro Gaming headsets are actually pretty much the leading uh, headset right now. They're really, really good and basically a headset just puts the game sound from your TV through your headset enabling you to hear things more clearly and more better when playing your game. And um, while sound is becoming a more prevalent thing in, the, in these games now and uh, a lot of people are focusing on sound, sound is becoming very you know prevalent and uh, useful in these games. Um, in a game like Ghost, where you have an Amplify perk, which it's conveniently and just like exponentially increases the sound enemies' footsteps makes, having a having a headset like an Astro or a Triton or whatever the case is, you can actually pinpoint literally in the direction the enemy is coming from just off the footsteps alone. And uh, even if they don't have Amplify, you can still kind of, you can still hear their footsteps. So having a headset really gives you that edge. It allows you to almost almost sonar like you know point out where the enemy is coming from. Um, just just notice where they're moving, uh, how fast they're going to be moving when they're coming for you, and enable you to react accordingly. So that's the reason why a lot of people use headsets. Um, all the pros use them. A lot of competitive uh, gamers, YouTubers actually use headsets because they have actually more than one use advantages. It can be used for the game. It can be used for their computer. And uh, they also have built-in microphones. So not only do you get an awesome headset, you get a microphone attached with it so that's why headsets are on this list of things that it's not necessarily needed but will give you a very good edge so moving on the next thing that you might want to invest in to improve your game is a monitor and what I mean by this is a PC monitor TVs are good I'm not saying you, you need to have a monitor or anything like that like I said all these hardware options are optional but a, a monitor is actually generally has a lower response time millisecond response time and what that means is that the time you input your command from your controller or any command to, from your controller or whatever to your TV, it it just was able to process on the screen faster. So that's the basic of what the millisecond response time means. And one of the leading computers for competitive gaming right now, computer monitors, is BenQ. You can go check out their website. I'll put it down in the description below along with the hardware that I actually use. So. These monitors al just allow you to uh, make sure that you're getting the fastest response time out of your inputs, giving you more of an edge over people who might be using a normal TV or a monitor with less response time. And mine actually has a 2.5 millisecond response time, which isn't bad, but ideally for Call of Duty now and other shooters in general like Battlefield, you want to be at a 1 millisecond response time. And these monitors actually do go up to 1080p and are at uh, 720p as well. So basically, you can get a nice looking, beautiful 24 inch monitor for 1080p with, the, with uh, one millisecond response time giving you an edge. And uh, that's uh, provided by BenQ and others as well, but BenQ is the leading one, like I said. So go check them out over at the website that I'll be putting in the description down below. below. And I'm um, actually thinking about getting a BenQ monitor myself to give me that edge. A 2.5 milliseconds isn't bad, but I kind I'm the type of person who wants to have the most edge that I absolutely can within a Call of Duty game or any other competitive game that I might be playing. So that does it for monitors. Now the next piece of equipment I have is also optional. I mean you could have the monitor, you can have the headset, but these are absolutely based on what you feel more comfortable with. And what I'm going to be talking about right now is called Control Freaks. And now Control Freaks is a company that specializes in a product which is almost like a rubberized plastic um, circular piece of, of equipment that you put on your left and right thumbsticks that actually increase their height by either a little to a lot and what these do is actually improve your accuracy and you know give you better control over you know your aim and um, you might think this is weird but 
I actually, I, well, the first time I ordered a Control Freak, I used it, and I'm not gonna lie, you actually do need to get adjusted to them. It takes a while, but once you do, you're gonna notice a, a significant improvement in your accuracy on the leaderboards and in your shot as well. So that's why I'm bringing Control Freaks into this because they actually do work wonders. They do help you to maintain a very good amount of accuracy and uh, allows you to stay on target a lot and control your recoil, control your gun better. And um, I actually was on a road to 30% accuracy early in my uh, YouTube starting, and I actually hit it. I hit 30% accuracy, which is very, very good um, while using Control Freaks because they did actually improve my accuracy that much. If you don't believe me, you can go check out their website, see some testimonies actually too on YouTube as well. These things actually do work and it gives people a slight edge. However, people do prefer to play without them. It just because it just comes down to what you feel most comfortable with. Because there's a lot of good people out there that use the standard thumbsticks and are really good shots. So it just comes down to personal preference. But if you want to try something new, try something different, Control Freaks is the way to go. So that was my list of how to get better in Call of Duty, guys, in Ghost and in general. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully, you'll take my advice. Hopefully, you'll take some tips, notice some things, and, um, you know, eventually do better as you progress. You know, a lot of new Call of Duties are coming out every year. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare coming out this year. Uh, Battlefield also becoming a yearly series. So if you want to get the edge on your competition, if you're looking to become a pro gamer, if, you want, if you're just competitive and like to win a lot or, you know, have a bigger edge over your competition, then use these tips to get that edge, get that boost, and become one of the best players in the game so hope you guys enjoyed my video and if you did i encourage you to please leave a like as always thank you guys for watching follow me on twitter as well be down in the description as always guys thank you for watching i appreciate it very much ghost rider now has 122 subs strong once again thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next vid peace out